It's the dreaded nightmare that every parent fears. Five-year-old Ali Barella is snatched by a total stranger while playing with her little brother outside their home in Englewood, Colorado. It just happened that she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. The boy tells police she was with a man and they went in a car. It only took a few seconds, enough time to leave her family reeling, tortured, and horrified. And there was this person who was a drug addict, and this person decided he was going to take her because he probably fantasized about what he would do with a child. The search for Allie drags on for four fruitless days before desperate police bring in a bloodhound named Yogi. The dog immediately succeeds where the cops have failed, leading them to a heavily wooded area 14 miles from where Allie was abducted. Tragically, it is too late. Allie has been murdered, her body stuffed into a duffel bag. When she was abducted, it was really hard for me because I didn't know how anybody could hurt her. She was such a beautiful little girl. Allie's heartbroken grandfather, Richard Bareles, was left with one question. What if? I think uh, we would have Ali today if a bloodhound had been able to come in and do a trail in that very first day. I truly believe that she would have been found alive and unharmed. It was a sad realization, but in a stunning use of his grief and pain, Richard formed the Ali Foundation. The mission? To supply police with dogs that find abducted children before it's too late. We want a bloodhound to be for other children available when children are abducted within the hour so they can start looking for that child right away. Bloodhounds are able to catalog scents. Track, track, come on. Particularly human scents and lock onto them. Good boy, good boy, good boy. And follow them over great distances, over several days, even over water. Track, where is he? Where is he? The Alley Foundation has now supplied close to 500 bloodhounds to law enforcement over the last 21 years since Alley was killed. One of Borella's hounds proved his worth just last year in the small town of Riverton, Wyoming. A nine-year-old was taken from her bed through an open window. The brave little girl screamed for dear life. Her parents came running only to find she was gone. For the cold trail, cops called in Red Flyer and his dog, Doc Holliday, to have him sniff out articles of clothing from the girl's bedroom. This is how a bloodhound works. They will catalog the scent in their brain like no other dog can do. In a miraculous and unexpected twist, the little girl was spotted wandering across a city intersection before the dog had a chance to find her. Sadly, she had been sexually assaulted, but she was alive. But Doc Holliday's job was not over. At the intersection where she was found, the bloodhound's nose hit on her scent. Now the race was on to track that scent back to her abductor. But once we left that intersection, the dog's nose was to the ground the entire time. Track, track. It was obvious to me that the dog was on a scent that he recognized and that he was tracking. Good boy, track. When he hit that, off we went. And then we were nose down, tail up, and he did not leave that scent. Fine, good boy. It's very hard to do this in the city because scent usually only sticks to foliage, grasses, that kind of things. But this bloodhound was one of the best. He went two and a half blocks, turned down an alley, kept his nose to the ground, and went directly to the back door of the suspect's bedroom, stuck his nose right to the door. And the cops busted David Wayne Brock. The successes of the Alley Foundation dogs are many, and the families are grateful for the work of the bloodhounds. While it has helped Richard's heart heal, the agony over his own loss will never subside. I have been angry for 21 years. And I have been hurting for 21 years. But it doesn't compare uh, with the pain that these children go through. <laughs> but you're doing what you can do. I do what I can do. What Richard and Red and the Alley Foundation do is to keep hope alive by keeping their hounds' noses to the ground and their tails in the air, doing their very best to bring families back together, one missing kid at a time. 
We are joined by Richard Bareilles, who you just saw in that powerful story. But we also have some other very special guests. We've got some dogs in the house, everybody, and this is my thing. I love it. Our bloodhounds. Who do we have here? Uh, this is Copper. She's a 10-month-old. She's in training right now. We're about to certify uh, in about four weeks. Wow. And Sage? Sage is uh, uh, coming on 11 years old. Um, she's the oldest uh, bloodhound in the uh, LAPD's bloodhound unit. And Ox. Obviously, right now, he's not working. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting some beauty rest. He's only a four-month-old, so he's stretching now. When they're this young, they go through a lot of exposure, especially like right here in Los Angeles. You have a different terrain, and you have the ocean. When they're young, you expose them to everything. That way, when they have to work those environments, they have no fear of that environment. I would have to say handling only detection dogs before and now handling a bloodhound, I had to convince myself the first couple times she did an awesome track and found the guy that it, it, it wasn't luck because it was uh -huh. too good. I was like, there's no way this can you be that good. You almost didn't believe it. Right, I almost didn't believe it the first couple times. And then after I saw her doing that kind of thing consistently, made me a believer pretty quick. And the interesting thing about Sage is just minutes ago, she was at work. Talk about what she <laughs> just did. I mean, yeah. successful mission, right? Yes, I came back just from a search, yes. I mean, it was a 70-year-old critical missing. Um, lady had um, dementia, was wow. confused. She walked away from an elder kid care home. Sage and I went out um, and we found her about three quarters of a mile away and we, she was able to be returned safely back to her family. These guys aren't just crime fighters, they're family. Yeah, they are. They are your family. They're not just a, a pet. They're not just a dog. They are part of you. When work is over, when they retire, what happens? Whatever handler that has had them um, will adopt them and they'll just get to live out their days on a porch. Okay, so now I think we want to see Sage in action. Okay. So what I think we should do is have Richard go in our newsroom, where he's never been, and go somewhere and hide. Sergeant Garcia and Officer Doros with Sage will go find you. Are you up yeah. for the challenge, Sage? Absolutely. Sage? She said yes. OK, she's down with it, too. <laughs> All right, so, so let's do this. OK. Thank you all so much for being here and sharing your stories and making sure we all understand how important these guys are. We're proud to be here. I know you are. I We're proud to be on a show like this, Crime Watch Daily.